It's brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico. Let's bring in Lobo head coach Craig Neal. Coach Neal, congratulations. Um, the, the games have continued to get bigger and bigger as the season gone, has gone on, and, and this was the biggest one of all so far. Yeah. What a performance. Yeah, it's, it, you know, feel good for the guys. Um, you know, I, I was trying to, trying to um, relax them a little bit because, you know, I, I felt a little pressure today. I felt a little pressure to shoot around. I felt a little, not pressure that, you know, we weren't going to get it done. Pressure that I wanted the, wanted it for them so bad. You want it for your guys so bad, and, and you can see it that they want it, and you can see how they played at UNLV, and you can see that they're willing to do whatever they could do to to get it done, and, and that was the pressure I felt. I thought our guys were really relaxed. Uh, I tried to keep them loose. I tried to do some things where we, you know, we're doing still doing a half court shot. I'm not doing as much X's and O's at, at shoot around. I'm, I'm just letting them shoot and get them in here and get them out of here and let them rest. But uh, I've been a, I've been a part of a lot of big games, but that that was the biggest one for me because I was a coach. Um, so I, I've been a part of a lot of great pit games, but it's like I said in the media tonight that these kids and my team deserve that for the next two home games be it Utah State, be it senior night for two guys that have done more for our program than anybody in the last 10 years, 15 years. Um, and, and that's the way it should be. And I, and I know our fans are going to step up. And I, I was really happy with uh, our fans because it was uh, it was loud in here today. And uh, I talked to everybody wanted to know what I thought about how loud it was. I said, well, it was really hot. And I said, the other thing was, uh, the best thing for me was to see Lamont Smith's reaction when it got going because he'd never been in one of these games where it's just been uh, crazy. And it's, it's a, you know, it's the highest ranked team we've been in here since 98. So it's a, it's a good thing for a program and in front of a national audience. You know, a lot of people were watching this game tonight uh, and my kids deserve it. You know, we, we really couldn't get over the hump, guys. We we beat Cincinnati. Now they're seventh in, in the country and we're getting ready to get back ranked and we lose the unit at home. And then we go on a little run and run, run again, and you're about ready to get ranked again. Then you lose one possession to Boise. Uh, so, you know, we were right there, but, you know, maybe that's the, the little stumbling blocks that we needed to get to where we're going to go. And we got a big ceiling. Uh, we got a lot of room to improve. And uh, just like what my team is right now. You just, that was long winded. I'm, I'm no, all good. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. You beat, you beat the number six team in the country like that. You can talk as long as you want. Hey, uh, but you did. You just beat the number six team in the country. You hold them 28 points under their season average. Right. What's making your defense so good right now? Well, I just think, you know, we've really, really. It, defense is building and defense is building from the ground up and, and we had the same defensive principles that we've always had we're just not icing the ball screen as much uh, we didn't go zone tonight because I know they're not shooting it very well but we were guarding them so you don't want to give them a couple of looks where they make a couple threes and get going I think the no help on Thames we've done no help on a couple guys the last few games I think's helped us um, the biggest thing uh, I, I don't understand it. I mean, we're getting – everybody's being critical of our defense, but when you hold the last nine teams you played under their average, I, I don't understand that. I don't – I can't help but that we're scoring 80 points a game. <laughs> we're going to give up a few more points. So, you know, hopefully we'll continue to get better defensively. Uh, really proud of the way the guys played. You know, I wasn't happy with the offensive rebounds in the first half, but, you know, we held them to four offensive rebounds in the second half. It was a weird game because – it was like last year's games. Um, you know, you're not getting to the line. You don't get in the bonus. You don't shoot 10. I mean, you know, we're shooting 20, 25 free throws a game. And we, I think we get six. Yep, four or six. Four or six. So, and they only got three. But they don't have any, they don't have a low post game. And the only driver they have is Thames. So, I thought our, our, what's really getting good and it's good to see is our, our pick and roll defense has gotten a lot better <laughs> and, and that's that's been a work in progress but i think our guys were fresh we given them some days off so we got to make sure they get rest but you know we didn't play a guy, i mean we you know played out in 36 and 37 and kindle 35 and i get q in there but you know that it's two weeks left so hopefully they'll hopefully they'll see the light at the end of the tunnel and keep working Scott talked about it all night long, how well they handled the ball screens. And the thing that I was so impressed with is that Hugh Green, with his physicality, showed tonight because he was able to get through. He get that little bit of help and get through. And he was on Thames all night and did such an amazing job. Well, I don't call him Thor for no reason. <laughs> I mean, 
I mean, he could, he could be in the Thor movie as strong as that cat is in his body. So, uh, And I thought Kendall did a good job, but I think... Blonde hair has something to do with it. Yeah, but he looks like Jax from uh, Sons of Anarchy, the motorcycle show. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing that, that Scotty will realize is because he's been with us and he's seen these games, we've always never had an answer for O'Brien. And tonight, Deshaun Delaney was the answer. Deshaun Delaney was able to guard him physically. We didn't have to put a four-man on him. Deshaun was able to play him and get a contest, you know, contest his shots. And uh, he's a terrific player. I like him a lot. But we've always had a hard answer for him, and we were able to do that tonight. Four for twelve, O'Brien. Four for twelve. Yeah, Kendall Williams, coach. Uh, you, you, after the UNLV game, you said uh, a month ago, you said. My team doesn't have its edge. Kendall Williams has had an edge the last couple games. He didn't have a huge night scoring tonight, but seven assists, one turnover. Talk about his mindset that, that he's had the last couple it's games. It's off the chart. His mindset's been, um, you know, we've had some good talks. You know, I had some good talks about where he wants to go, what he wants to be, and I told him how he's got to do it. And he's been locked into winning. He's been locked into enjoy his senior year. He's been locked into enjoying the last few games. But to a kid that handled the ball as much as he did against their pressure and only have one turnover and set us up and get the ball inside to get to where we needed to go is huge. And, uh, you know, he had a big three. Uh, he hit two big threes, I think. Yeah, he hit two big threes. Uh, and he almost hit another one. I thought it was in. It went in and out. But um, he, he did a terrific job, seven assists. But he's, he's going to be five or four points ahead of what he averaged last year and he's going to lead the league in assists and he's he's on the team that's tied for first right now i mean you can't say enough about the kid i don't know if this was asked in your uh, post-game presser up there mid-ramp but i'm going to ask it right now if there's any question about who is in that final race for conference player of the year after tonight it's between your two guys after this performance yeah tonight. yeah I, i've always thought that um, I've always thought that about what they've done. It's just that I'm in a tough spot because I got to put I got to put both of them up. I hope they don't split the vote. That's the only problem. But you know, it's a tough deal. But they both deserve it. Maybe they'll be co-player of the years. But you know, we got to continue to play better and continue to win games. And it set us up for, you know, it set us up for what we're looking to do. I mean, we want to still win another conference championship, but it's one step at a time. And then, uh, then you then you want to go in the Mount West tournament, playing good basketball, and try to win it, and then prepare for for the big one. I I, I hesitate to even ask this question because I, I think I know what your answer is going to be. But <laughs> how much you, you know me pretty good? How much do you care about top twenty five votes on Monday? Does it matter to you much? I don't care. Okay, not at all. I do for my fans. Yep. I do for my program. But as long as my team keeps playing and keeps going, um, you know, I don't think I think we'll be in the top 25. Yeah. But it just it's it's good for your program and it's good for your kids. It's a good feeling, and um, that's what I want. As a coach, yeah. You, I mean, I think we we buckled under pressure a little bit when we ranked 20. We've never been ranked in a preseason, right? And I think it's kind of like last year. I don't think we handled it, and I know I'm ready for it. I don't think we handled how well we were playing at the end of last year <clears throat> with our kids because they never experienced people talking about going to Sweet 16, going to Lead 8. Lead. Well, now we've been there. We've been there. <clears throat> we know how to handle it now. At least I know how to handle it. So um, I'm sure we're going to be ranked. Uh, the kids deserve it. But uh, believe me, uh, I'm reading a great book right now, The Slightest Edge. It's a great book. And uh, my guys will continue to have their edge. You were able to find it, weren't you? On what the edge? Yeah, oh yeah, and then we, you know we were talking about mm -hmm. it here uh, before you you joined that us. That night, the game. yeah. That night after I said it, then uh, they knew I was serious. And um, sometimes fear is better than anything. And um, I, I don't think they fear me, but they know when I'm serious. And uh, they know what I know what I'm talking about. And that's what I've been. It's like I said up there in the press conference. I said I've never been more proud of guys because they believed in a new staff. They believed in a new coach. They've done everything I've asked them to do, and it's just good for me to see them get to where I knew they could get, but it also gives me validation on what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell anybody if you don't go put a tape in tonight. You can enjoy this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think my wife wouldn't know any other way. I just have to go and watch Utah State tonight. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Coach Neal. Great job. Hello, head coach Craig Neal, our guest, your Della Diddle. Postgame comments brought to you by Delta Dental of New Mexico. Almost 400,000 New Mexicans covered by Delta Dental Plans. For more information, log on to deltadentalnm.com.